Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at creating a little watermark that you can stick in the corner of your videos. Very uh, simple to do. It's going to be kind of a two-part video tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to actually create this logo and then we're going to turn it over to the video guy that will be Mark Absalon. Uh, and he will be showing you how to take care of the video portion of this. Uh, if you would like to check out more of Mark's stuff, I'm going to have all of his uh, website or ch YouTube channel links over in the video description uh, for this particular video. So, if you want to check him out, uh, you can check him out right through there. And this video is going to, you know, seamlessly fade right into him to picking up where I leave off. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at what we have to create here. Alright, we're going to create this logo that you see here on screen. Pretty simple to do. And typically for creating a logo, I'm going to recommend you use Adobe Illustrator because that's going to give you real vector artwork. Here in Photoshop, I'm just using Photoshop, so the majority of you guys are going to be able to follow along. Nobody should have any problems. We're just going to be using some vector masking in Photoshop. I'm going to show you how to do everything. It's going to be easy. We're going to go through and you're going to learn a few things because I actually picked up a couple little uh, tips and tricks that I'm going to use more regularly actually as I was demoing this and figuring out ways to make it maybe a little bit faster. So let's take a look at how we can create this particular logo. Now this is just some fictitious company name. It could be your name. It could be the name of your channel. Whatever you want it to be. I'm going to close this down. Nah, I don't want to save it. And we're going to go file new. Create a brand new document. You can name it whatever you want. I want this to be 800 by 450. Again, size isn't really going to matter because we're using vector masks. We're going to be able to scale this up and down however we want here within Photoshop. So, background contents, we want the background uh, to be black. We don't have that option here. We're going to choose white and we're just going to hit OK. And the first thing we're going to do is hit Command or Control I. That's going to invert the color of our background, making it black like you see. The next thing we want to do is hit the D key. That sets our foreground and background colors back to black and white, respectively. And then we want to hit X to flip the foreground and background colors. White should now be our foreground color. Okay, what we want to do next is grab our rectangle tool here. I already actually have it selected. And uh, what we're going to do is click and hold on that and choose the polygon tool. And then we want to come up here right next to the custom shapes icon. There's a little arrow pointing down. Select that and we get polygon options. Make sure you have star checked on and indent sides by 75%. Okay, we also want this star to have 10 sides, so set that to 10, and we're ready to draw out our first star. Uh, one last thing we do want to make sure we set is set this to draw shape layers, right there. It's the icon of these three icons here, the icon all the way on the far left. That's going to give us a shape that is vector, uh, basically a vector mask. So that's gonna be great. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start drawing out stars to begin creating a shape. And what I want to do is make my shape to here to the left side to be pretty big and then sort of narrow down as it gets over to the right hand side. So we're going to just sort of start drawing out a shape like this, drawing out tons of these stars like so. Just like this. And don't worry if it's not coming out quite perfect. We're not going to be too, too picky here. We're just going to kind of blow through this pretty quickly. All right, a couple more shapes and we're gonna be all done. Drop one in there. And then you might wanna come back a couple additional shapes in areas that maybe don't look quite the way you want them to look. All right, so this is probably pretty good. I'm gonna throw a couple more out here on the top. Uh, might start to bog down a little bit because we have all these layers in here. You can see they're all just these vector shape layers. All right, once you have all these layers, what we wanna do is select the top layer, hold down the shift key and select the bottom layer and then hit command or control G. That's gonna group them all. And we're just going to double click it. We're going to name it Logo Base. Just like that. Perfect. All right. So now that we've done that, we are ready to go ahead and essentially punch a hole in the center of this. The reason we don't just want to place some black text over this is because we want to be able to see our video through this watermark. We're actually going to make the entire watermark semi uh, opaque, so it's going to be transparent. It's almost going to be like a little bit of glass down there in the bottom corner. We can still see our video through it, so you're not going to be obstructing anything uh, from view when you place this watermark in your video. That's going to be kind of important, but it's going to make this a little more difficult because we actually need to cut this hole in the center of our logo. All right, that's going to complicate things because again, we want to leave it as a vector mask. And this here, if you want to take the time, you can come up here to image, canvas size, increase your canvas size, and then just scale this entire thing up. And you're going to see it's going to stay crisp and sharp on the edges. It's not going to get blurry like you would typically expect uh, a raster graphic to get. So that's going to give me a little bit of peace of mind here working in Photoshop. All right, we need to start with text because we just want to type our name across the center of this and punch the hole in the middle. So we start with the text tool. And I'm using this particular font face. Honestly, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. Denaub, Denub, something like that. D 
D-N-A-U-B-E is the name of the font face. And I'm doing bold and 115 point, and I didn't mean to place that text there. So if you're not sure what font face you're using, you may want to just select a different text color. And I'm going to go with a bright blue here just for the sake of being able to see it. Um, because the, the color of the text is not going to matter. So I'm just going to select here and I'm going to type the, the letters P-H-I-L-A. And I left out the H. There we go. P-H-I-L-A. That's going to be our name or our channel's name or whatever. Just some name I came up with. Uh, we're going to place it sort of right here in the center of our uh, our sort of logo base. All right, now that we've done that, text is a vector. It's just sort of like an inherent nature of this, well, this particular te uh, font. So... What we want to do is just basically convert this to a path and then use that path as our vector mask. You need a path to create a vector mask. We can't just, you know, control click this text and convert it to a mask. So what we want to do is just with this text layer selected, we're going to come up here to layer. We're going to go to type and we're going to say create work path. You can see, well, if you're following along, you can see that you now have a work path wrapping itself around all of those letters. If I go to my paths panel, there's my work path. Now the problem is, if I were to take this and convert this to a vector mask right now, all it would do is just show me the white that's inside of this path. So what I need to do is create a path that covers everything except these letters. Really, really easy to do. We're going to come over here and select this polygon tool that we would used earlier. We're going to go up to the rectangle tool. Very nice. We're going to set this to draw paths. That would be the icon in the center of those three icons over to the left-hand side of the control bar. Then all the way over to the far right-hand side of the control bar, we're going to choose Exclude Overlapping Path Areas. There you go. You can see the tooltip is telling me Exclude Overlapping Path Areas. Select that and just draw out a shape over the entire uh, document, just like that. Now, if we go back to our Paths panel, we can see that everything in our work path is white except the text. It's a very tiny thumbnail, I know. I can barely see it here, so I'm sure you're having a really rough time seeing it uh, there where you're watching from. So everything except inside of this text is white. So all the white stuff is going to be shown. The black stuff, which in this case is the text, is going to be hidden. So with this work path selected, I'm going to go back to Layers. I'm going to select this layer group. And I'm going to go Layer, Vector Mask, current path. So essentially we're telling Photoshop take the current path that we have selected and make that a vector mask. And you can see we've cut a hole in the middle, however it doesn't look like we've done anything because our blue text is still showing. Here's a quick hotkey tip. When you have a, a, a path selected, hit the escape key to deselect it, and there we go, that's gone. I'm going to hit the eyeball to the left hand side of the text layer, and you can see we've cut a very sharp hole in the center of our logo. Very, very nice. Alright, one last thing to do would be just select this entire lo uh, group, excuse me, and just reduce the opacity to 50%. There we go. I'm going to alt double click the background layer, there'll be option double click on the Mac. And, uh, and just shut that off or you can toss it in the trash. I'm just going to shut it off for here. And there's our logo. You can barely see it. But what I'm going to do next is just save it out. So Control shift s that'd be Command-Shift-S on the Mac. And here, I'm just going to name it logo.psd. Hit OK. And yes, maximize that compatibility. And there we go. We have created our logo. And you can see, there it is. We're going to shut that background layer off, though. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mark, who's going to walk you guys through how to take this logo from this PSD, do whatever you have to do, bring it in, and get it in your video. Hi, guys. Mark Absalon here. And I want to thank Tutvin for making that cool and groovy logo. Well, we have the logo that Tutvin did, and now we're going to take it and incorporate it into our video. And the way we're going to incorporate it is we're going to create something that's called a bug. Now, what is a bug? Well, a bug, you've probably seen it before. It's the little logo that's either found up in the corner of your video, either side or down below, and you've probably seen it on TV shows, like for instance, MTV uses one, NBC, ABC, all these uh, different companies, and they use it for station identification and to also show that it's copyrighted and who created it and everything, and you too can use this in your video to make it look more professional. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this into Sony Vegas Pro and we're going to show how to go from there. Let's go to File in Sony Vegas Pro and click New. And you'll see your new project window come up and uh, on the templates you can choose whichever template you want or customize it. It's up to you. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, HDV 720 30 frames a second for uh, this project. We'll click OK. And go over to our media bin area and we'll select the Explorer tab. And as you can see, I've got a lot of different files lined up here, including our logo. 
Now I'm going to just drag these files straight down onto the timeline. We're not going to trim these at all because these files are going to actually represent your video that you're putting your bug onto. So let's get these down here. These are some uh, desert files I did quite a while back. Uh, it was a nice hot sunburnt day when I did these, but uh, it was cool being out there. It was really awesome. Uh, but anyway, this represents your video. Now, we need to actually insert a track, and we want this track to be on top. You can do this by selecting Control, Shift, and Q, or you can go over and right click and insert video track, whichever you would like to do. Now, something we need to talk about really quick here is the fundamentals of uh, all nonlinear editing software. The fact is your timeline is like a layer of cake, and it's actually like looking uh, at the side of the cake if you were to cut it in two. The top being the top of the cake, and uh, our video clip here being the bottom of the cake. And this, this is continuous for each layer you put on. Whatever, if the layer is down here at the bottom, that's going to be the bottom of the cake if we stuck another layer on top. So you get the gist of it. Now your canvas window uh, or your preview window, actually Vegas integrates the preview and the canvas together, but this is our canvas window at the moment. It's like looking down from up top on the cake so you can see the top of the cake. So just remember this when you're editing, it's uh, something that you need to know and I know a lot of you guys probably already know it, uh, but we need to keep our bug on top of the cake and that would be this track right here. Before we proceed to, I'd like to talk about this little button here in Vegas. You can see I've, I had these boxes around here. I'll take those off. But uh, if you'll click on the side and click Safe Areas, you'll see two boxes appear. This is a 10% zone box and a 20% zone box. The 20% zone uh, box is pretty much for titles, and the 10% is for cutoff from the picture. Now we use this in video and uh, in film transfers because what happens a lot of times if you're watching on a television, the sides, like right over here, can actually be cut off by the TV. Well, the 10% box lets us know that we're in a safe area. Um, so if we're adding something, it won't actually get cut off. Uh, sometimes it'll cut off a little bit on the top and bottom to the resolution, but that rarely happens. Um, and just to kind of prove a point here, let me just demonstrate. Like let's say we decided to put our uh, logo bug right here. Well, it'd be in a safe area. You know that a TV would not cut it off. But if we put it over here, it would probably be cut off on a TV. So this is something if you're doing professional video editing, you'll be using these boxes a lot just to make sure that everything's gonna be okay. Now for internet video, like for instance YouTube, don't worry about these boxes. There are no cutoff points on YouTube, so you can place your logo anywhere on the screen and it'll it'll be A-OK. -okay. Well now, since I've kind of went over that, I'm gonna leave those off for the time being. Let's go up to our Explorer window and drag down our logo to the, our very first track. Now you can see it there. It's big and bold. It's too big, right? Yeah, we're done. No, I'm just kidding. We're not finished. We have to reduce the size of the logo so that it will work for our bug project. But our logo is only five seconds. We need to make it a little longer. So let's go over to the very edge of the, uh, the clip that we brought in from Photoshop and uh, click on it and drag that over to the entire duration of our clip. Now this is a Photoshop file and Photoshop's uh, files were great in Vegas. They don't layer it or anything like they do in Premiere Pro, but uh, the transparencies and everything else uh, come through fine so it works great. And I love using Photoshop files in, uh, in Vegas because of this. So we've got it here and uh, it's looking kind of big. We need to make it smaller. So to do that, let's go over to Track Motion on the track that the uh, logo is located on. Click Track Motion and a giant window is going to open up the Track Motion window. Now before we proceed any further, make sure that your aspect ratio is locked, that uh, this little button is clicked. If it's not clicked, what will happen is if you go down and try and reduce this, you'll have all kinds of wonderful problems. You can hold shift and it'll maintain it, but just to, it's better to keep the aspect ratio locked. So, I mean, unless you're doing some sort of artistic creativity 
something with your uh, logo, I would recommend keeping it locked. Let's go up and undo this. There we go. Let's uh, make sure that uh, button is clicked. And then let's go over to the edge again and reduce it down in size. Now the size of your bug is really going to depend on the quality of your video. Like for instance, if you're shooting HD, you can make it a little bit smaller than this and it'll work for you. If you're doing YouTube, you might want to make it a little larger, but YouTube's in HD and the quality looks pretty good on it, so I doubt uh, it would cause any problems. But if you're using another internet video site that the video you know, just isn't that great, you might want to make it pretty large so people will notice it. So let's actually uh, there we go. Let's actually reduce this in size. Uh, I'm thinking about like that's pretty cool. And now let's actually click on it and drag it to the corners because you want to make sure that your bug is in the corner of your video whether it's the corner on the bottom or the corner on the top you never ever ever want to put your bug like right there where I have it at the moment because you might be doing an interview and your bug ends up on someone's forehead which has happened in interviews before but not this type of a bug and uh, if it's there on someone's forehead, it's the equivalent of a photographer actually uh, taking a photograph with a tree behind someone and it looks like the tree is growing out of their head. So just be aware that the best place to place a bug is in the corners of your video. I think we're actually going to place this at the top up here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select the overlay so I can see the 10% zone because I I'm so used to doing this that I'm just gonna do it here anyway. Okay, there we go. So we know it's safe even if we're not using it on YouTube, it'll work on television, you'll be able to see it. All right, let's go ahead and close our track motion window. Now, something that you, you'll notice is when we reduced it, it becomes um, not quite as transparent. And there's one way to solve this. Um, go up to the top of the track where the, the logo clip is located and the little finger will appear. Let's bring and click that and bring that down to about 75. Because we want this to be noticeable but not that noticeable. Because that's the whole point of a bug. It's to show that it's there but it's not really there. So what we just did now looks great. So now we've got this done and we have it all professionally looking with Phila up here. It looks uh, really smooth and cool. We need to render this out. So go ahead and double click uh, the track to select the regions that we're going to render. Go up to File, click Render As. And uh, we're going to do this in AVI. Let's actually call this Desert. And uh, we're going to do it in a template, which is a 720 intermediate. But I'm going to change something here on the custom. Go to Video. And uh, I'm going to change the video format from the Cineform codec to Blackmagic 422 because that was actually the, the original um, uh, codec it was recorded in. So we'll click OK and click Save. And there we go. We're actually rendering out our file with a bug on it. Well, this has been fun, guys. We've created a cool logo that TetVid did, and I've taken uh, Ted Vid's cool logo and actually shown you how to make a bug for your videos whether they're on YouTube or off YouTube. 